Tonight, we are learning more about the student who was killed at Southeast Raleigh High School yesterday and what school leaders are doing to make sure that this never happens again. This is 15 year old Delvin Farrell. His family and friends grieved tonight after he was stabbed to death at school. Tonight, they share more about his life while officials discuss what's next for the student accused of killing him. The incident is also putting new pressure on Wake County school leaders to upgrade its security. We have team coverage of this very important story tonight. Ashley Rowe has the latest information on the victim and the suspect. Matt Tallhelm is pressing school board members on safety. Yeah, let's start there. The board met earlier today. Matt, what have we learned from their discussion? Well, Deborah, not much. That's because the school board safety and security committee went behind closed doors here to have that discussion for about two hours. They cited a law that allows closed meetings to, quote, formulate plans related to prevention of school violence through the development of emergency plans. And we obviously thought we would be talking about different things today. The Wake County School Board's Safety and Security Committee cleared the agenda on its calendar to confront the crisis of a student killed on one of its campuses. Take a moment to hold the Southeast Raleigh Magnet High School community in our hearts with a moment of silence. That silence continued as the committee moved behind closed doors to discuss confidential security updates. For parents who want to know what that will look like, why not have this discussion in open in public here? As a parent myself, I understand that feeling. We do have to have some things be um, more confidential so that um, our children are safe, and that is a request from law enforcement agencies as well. Board Chair Lindsay Mahaffey would not say if they're considering metal detectors or weapons detection systems. How hard is it to stop a kid from bringing a knife to school? Well, I think yesterday shows that it was uh, definitely difficult. Lieutenant Mariah Averett is head of school resource officers for the Wake County Sheriff's Office. We certainly have to have a plan. Um, there are going to be parents that are going to want answers. <laughs> the Sheriff's Office posts SROs at 21 middle schools and East Wake High School. These guys are staying vigilant and having to move around constantly within the school to make sure that they're seen. Averett says that presence is important. So are the relationships the deputies build with students so they trust their SROs to report threats before they escalate to violence. The sheriff's office has investigated 16 threats so far this school year. What would you like to see with, when it comes to security in the schools? I just think we need to keep training. I mean, it, it, you cannot prevent every incident and we've just got to train and work together. Now, the safety and security meeting members here in that committee emerged after that meeting about two hours. They didn't make any decisions or didn't announce any decisions, at least publicly here. The school's superintendent, who is new to this job here in Wake County, did say that the school board has done an outstanding job. He says they have questioned the school administrators like they should about these issues, but no further decisions, no plans announced moving forward at this point. That conversation will continue, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Matt Tallhelm, live in Raleigh. Thank you, Matt. Let's go to Ashley Rowe in the studio. Ashley, you are learning more about the victim in this case and the student accused of killing him. Delvin Farrell was just 15 years old. A second student who was stabbed was 16. The suspect in this case is 14. Tonight, bouquets of flowers marked with condolence messages rest on a flagpole outside the school where Farrell was fatally stabbed. The school was closed today. Farrell's family says he enjoyed sports and video games. The other teenager stabbed remains in the hospital tonight. The teenager accused in the case had a juvenile petition secured against him and a custody hearing took place earlier today. We are very much at the beginning of a process uh, in this case and we'll be doing what we can to make sure that it moves forward uh, efficiently and in a way that will bring justice to the victim's family. Freeman says she anticipates to transfer this case to Superior Court, where the 14-year-old would be tried as an adult. Coming up at 6 o'clock, WRAL's Chelsea Donovan will join us live with more from Farrell's family. Gerald?